What is up, YouTube? It is your boy Diamonds here at Common Sense Graphics. I know, I know, a long time no see, but you know what? I'm back at it, doing what I gotta do at my own pace. But you guys voted for this video, and that is what are the keys that I use whenever I'm doing anything with Adobe Illustrator. And I just want to clarify that I do use a drawing tablet, pen tablet, which has hotkeys all set up on it and stuff. But I'm gonna try my best to do this. But let's begin with the basic function of the B button, the brush tool. It is probably one of my most used buttons out of everything. I could draw everything and then one of my second most used buttons is the undo button which is control Z that pretty much undoes everything and if I want to bring it right back with the redo function it is control shift Z which can bring it back so undo control Z bring it back control shift Z and it just works in harmony especially my flow because it's all set up on my buttons now, whenever I'm making logos or anything, I use basic functions like the M button. M button is for squares. So making a square is super simple, super easy. And if I decide to hold shift, it can lock it into place as a perfect square. So if you want to do that, you can do that, or you can just make it be loose. And I'll show you that with the L button, which is circle. L button, if I do it loose without holding shift button, I can make it look like anything. If I hold shift, perfect circle. And that is as easy as it can get when it comes to those functions. So now on the next step, I'm going to talk about the selection tool and direct selection tool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag my square, I'm going to put it underneath the circle button. So all I got to do now, I'm just going to drag it over and then I'm going to change the color to a bluish color just to show what they are. And so you guys are able to see what I'm doing to it and the way how I'm going to manipulate it. Also a little side note, I use the space bar. Um, I have that tied to my pen tablet as the first click on the stylus. I have two buttons on my stylus and if I hold that it pretty much allows me to move the entire canvas around without disrupting the image itself. And so pretty much that's what I use spacebar to move everything around without disrupting the actual image and Z button to zoom in and out of parts of the image that I want to see. If I want to get close to an image I can zoom in incredibly deep in detail especially for illustrator um, since it's vector based there's no pixels and it I can go really 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 close in without getting all choppy and stuff now if you guys ever watch any of my anime monday videos you guys will notice that i always fill in the shadows and stuff using the pen tool the pen tool is the end button on the keyboard and i use that to do almost all of my shading when it comes to that portion of my images in illustrator it's just really fast for me to draw it in i can do it really smooth um, you can change the smoothness depending how sensitive you want your stylus to be you can do a lot of settings and then sometimes i might use the p button which is the pen tool which you can do a lot. Now, the Pathfinder is what I use to be able to divide images. So, for example, you saw my square and circle. You saw the square circle uh, going a little bit past the square, so it's bypassing, it's bigger. And I, people ask me, how do I divide some images like that when they're covered up with each other and stuff like that? So pretty much, you need to open up your Pathfinders. You need to go to Windows, then Pathfinder, and then you need to click on the Divide button. When you do that, then you'll be able to manipulate the image using the Direct Selection tool, which is the A button. As you see here, I'm able to move individual selections and manipulate it to whatever way I want it to look. I can do so many different things. And I'll show an example of what I'm talking about near the end of the video, where I take one of my older illustrations and I can show you what I mean once everything's all merged together and all grouped together. I'm able to just manipulate it by using the direct selection tool because everything is all chopped up into its own special little thing. And it's just super easy and simple. But there's also a few other tricks that I use here, to, here and there and able to get really fast copy and paste effects where if I need some, st some stuff to be equal in length, you can see here I'm making myself a small little perfect square and then I'm going to drag it along. I'm going to hold the shift and alt button just to make sure that it's on an axis. So if you hold alt, you can move it around, but if you hold shift with alt, then it gets stuck onto an axis as you see there. But let's say I put a square right here and I want it to go all the way across without losing its separation. Make sure everything is all even across. All I got to do then is just hit control D and I can make a bunch of them after I've done it. If you deselect it before you do that, then it probably won't work. Uh, sometimes it does work still, but it just shows it as a direct function of what you did last, your last functionality, your last key click. And as you see here, they're all perfectly separated apart. They are the exact perfect length. 
Now, another key function that I use is the eye button, which is the eyedropper tool for colors and stuff. So uh, if there's like, let's say I'm doing a complicated drawing and there's a piece of the body or clothing that I want to match this other piece of clothing with the same color, pretty much I'll just select that with the direct selection tool and then I'll press the eye button and then go over to where the other color is at and then just select it. You see here I'm doing here, I'm just selecting these colors from the three colors that I have on my screen and it's just a real simple way to do it. Now, as I was saying earlier, I'm going to bring up one of my older images that I drew a while ago and show you what I mean about the direct selection tool. So when you start getting two complicated pieces like the one I'm about to pull up, um, there's a lot you can do to manipulate it and a lot you can do to get easily lost. So if you know these key functions about the undo and redo, the control shift Z, uh, control Z, then you'll be able to maintain where you're located at without much fatal flaw and you'll be able to just work more easier. You won't, you won't get clogged up, you won't forget what you're doing. And again, like I said, having these uh, keys set up as just single button presses on your pen tablet really does help out a lot. I have a total of what? I have 16 hot keys on my pen tablet, so I'm able to do a lot. And I'm going to just like pick apart this image and just show you what I mean about how there's a lot of singular items here and there that I'm just able to do. And you see here I'm using Control Z, I'm just bringing it out, holding Alt button, um, just dragging it. I apologize for the noise. I apologize for the noise. Um, sound like some work going on outside, but you know how it is what I do. And again, back to the image, I'm gonna start just dragging it out. Also, if you hold shift while clicking on your stuff with the direct selection tool, you can select multiple objects and you can move them all together at the exact same time, all in place. And so you're able to just do a lot. And as you see, like I said, I'm just picking this character apart. Just real simple and easy, just nothing too difficult, nothing too strange. And I'm just having fun with it. Like I said, I'm able to just drag everything and just put it over here. I'm taking this character's all of her colors apart without disrupting her line work. And you could just see exactly what I'm talking about. See how it came together, see how everything's merged together um, without the blacks. And it just comes out real nice, real cool, and real simple. And you could do a lot with these key bindings and key presses and stuff. You can also get lost real quickly if you do things the wrong way. Uh, one click can change a lot of things, but luckily now you know what control Z is, so you can undo it and go back. Um, sometimes if you do a few key presses that might be too much or overwhelming for your computer, it can sometimes crash your computer. Like if you do, uh, I believe it's control Y, which brings up the magic wand. If you click too many times with that, it can uh, slow down your computer because it's making it work too hard and it can cause problems and sometimes make your computer crash depending on what system you got. So do be careful with that. But this is pretty much it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. It's a very basic illustrative tutorial on the key presses and key binds that I use for whenever I draw anything. Uh, very simple, very easy stuff here. It's not hard at all. Anyone can get it. Uh, very simple and straightforward. But yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. It is your boy Diamonds here at Common Sense Graphics. Can't wait to get back into it. I'm being a little bit slow, just been busy uh, with real life stuff and stuff like that. Um, got into drone cinematography, um, started doing that as you guys see with my car video and stuff like that. But yeah, just having fun. But yeah, again, your boy out, rate, comment, subscribe, all that BS, all that bullshit. Let me know what you guys think. Um, if you guys have any thoughts for any Monday of who I should draw or if I should just draw someone who I already have picked out, then yeah, let me know. Your boy out yet again. Bye.